We're joined via Skype by Dr. Franz Lohenning. He's a neurologist and chairman of the ALS Association of South Africa. Uh, Dr. Henning, very good morning to you and thanks for your time. Um, can you give us some idea uh, very briefly for us to understand in layman's terms what exactly ALS is? So ALS is um, a form of motor neuron disease. It's not the only form, but it's the most common form. About 90% of uh, people with motor neuron disease have, have this form. And what basically happens is that the motor nerves, in other words, those nerves from the brain to the muscles that control the muscles, start to de degenerate. Um, what exactly causes it is still unclear. We know in about 5 to 10 percent of cases this is genetically determined, but so the vast majority, the, the cause is still unclear. And this then leads to inability to use these different muscles. And it can really start in many places in the body. Some, some patients may detect symptoms first in the feet, some in the hands or a hand, some in the uh, muscles that, that control speech or, or swallowing. So it, it really has to do with control of, of movement or the execution of movement that the first symptoms that people may, may detect. So from what we understand, or from what I understand from what you're saying, the brain continues to function as normal. You're fully aware. It's just that the body just can't respond properly. That, that's correct. Um, that is true in, a, in a, again, about 90% of cases. There are a few, about 10 to 15% of, of people eventually at any stage during the disorder might develop some, what we call a, a form of frontotemporal dementia, which basically means that behavior may become um, somewhat affected in that they become more impulsive, uh, short-tempered, but that is, as I said, in the minority of cases. In, in some cases, it's, these are the first symptoms, but um, in most uh, brain, high brain functions are not affected. Now, you did mention the genetic factor that some, sometimes this might be hereditary or genetic, uh, doctor, but who else would be vulnerable to, to um, a disease like ALS? Look, it, it is a disease that occurs more frequently in in uh, older populations. So we know the peak of incidence is between about 55 to 70. Um, only about 10% of cases will develop it, uh, of people will develop it below the age of 45. So age is definitely a risk factor, but has also been shown to be a risk factor of smoking, although um, it's, it doesn't elevate the risk significantly, about double the risk. Mm -hmm. But um, other than that, the investigators have looked at different chemicals, exposure to pesticides, etc. Nothing really comes up as a consistent risk factor. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are very much still in the dark at this stage about this. So the use of chemical substances, like you say, still under still under investigation in this case. And one has to wonder particularly about sportsmen and women and those who are particularly involved in contact sport, like you as was when it comes to rugby. Would they be particular candidates for 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 ALS? Yeah, that's a very good question and a very really hot topic over the past few years. There has been some studies, firstly from uh, Italian soccer players, that uh, did show that there's an increased risk uh, in professional soccer players. And then also studied from the states in, in NFL, National Football League players, who also showed the same thing. Interestingly, the study in the states showed especially the speed players are, are at risk. So there's been a lot of theories about this. Is it perhaps the fact that high speed players have higher velocity head impact um, with recurrent head injuries that might lead to this? However, the it, it seems to be quite well established that risk or head injury per se does not seem to be a risk factor for, AL, for motor neuron disease. So one of the more prevalent theories at the moment, and again this is pure speculation, is that sporting ability per se, in other words, often genetically determined, might actually be um, a risk factor for ALS. Is it preventable? But speculation. Uh, sorry, repeat. Is, is ALS preventable, or, or, or motor neuron disease in general, is it, is it preventable? Well, other than not smoking, because as I said, smoking elevates the risk somewhat. Other than that, it, it, uh, there's nothing that one can really do to, pre to prevent this from happening at this stage. It just might change in the future. There might be environmental risk factors that come to the front that are shown to, to really predispose somebody to develop this. But at the moment, there's really nothing one can do um, to, to prevent this. We, most investigators believe that 
developing AL is, is determined by a genetic predisposition combined with some other most likely environmental risk factor. Uh, in other words, both um, are present uh, in the vast majority of cases. What is so, the Sorry, Doctor, what is the lifespan of somebody diagnosed with ALS? We know Joost was, uh, you know, managed to, to, to go for many more years than, than what he was given, uh, sort of like two, two and a half years. I mean, he, he battled this uh, disease for six years, longer than anyone thought. What is the lifespan? And if detected early enough, are you able to, to lead a, a better quality life with, with treatment? Okay. So um, the, the, the lifespan, we know what average numbers are. Remember, it, it's going to be very, it's very important to understand that this, is an average number. This doesn't apply to a single person sitting in front of, of you. Um, the average lifespan is about two to four years. That said, uh, we know that 20%, in other words, one out of five people will survive for longer than five years. 10% will survive for longer than 10 years. So there's really a very wide range in, in survival. Um, earlier detection does not really change the outcome. Um, it is important to have a diagnosis by the time uh, very debilitating symptoms like swallowing this difficulty, breathing difficulty develops so that one can address this um, sufficiently. This is mostly symptomatic um, support, although some of it has been shown to, to increase life expectancy by a few months. Right, but it's mainly I'm about sorry. quality of life. Before I let you go very quickly, and you did mention some of them earlier, but just very quickly the early signs and symptoms of something like ALS. Okay, so in, in about 60% of cases, it would start with either a foot um, or leg or a hand, arm being affected. Another 30% or about a third would be with what we call bulbous symptoms, in other words, usually stirred speech immediately, then difficulty swallowing. And a very small minority would start with breathing difficulties first, but the vast majority, either a limb that becomes weaker, uh, becomes smaller, so we call it atrophy. Some people notice muscle twitches, or that we call fasciculations, um, and the swallowing and speech difficulty. Right, thanks for that, Dr. Frank Henning, a neurologist and chairman of the ALS Association of South Africa.